In 2015, one of the leading guitar manufacturers in the world surveyed a small sample of players in North America and found that 50% of new guitar buyers were female. Some began attributing the phenomenon to the success of Taylor Swift, calling her the most influential guitarist of recent years, and not because of her musical prowess, but because of how she looked with a guitar on stage. It was thought that these young women wanted to emulate her. Swift is a talented musician, but by the pop singer's fifth studio album, she was rarely picking up a guitar and has been playing less of it on stage as time has gone on, yet women continue to define the emerging guitar market. Fender revised their study in 2018 and not only confirmed that half of all beginners and aspirational guitar players were still women, but that it's happening worldwide, suggesting that the future of rock might just be 50% female. With rock's popularity declining in recent years, why are so many women now taking to guitars than ever before? Some of it might be explained by the internet. Most guitar purchases by women were made online as they felt intimidated by the music shop culture. Girls are embarrassed to go into shops in the fear of being judged by male staff. And this isn't just in music shops. The music industry as a whole has always been male dominated. Female musicians and industry figures say the imbalance is due to intimidation as well as exclusion. From childhood, girls are not being encouraged to play guitars or join bands. And if you're paying attention, most of today's best rock music is already being made by women. Women made some of the best albums of 2018, but you wouldn't know that from looking at the charts though, or from tuning into alternative radio. There's a real lack of female rock representation, and the women who are included are sometimes only there just to meet some quota. A result of the male-dominated industry, it could also be the lack of female programmers at stations who ultimately decide what gets put into rotation. I've made a Spotify playlist featuring some of the best female rock acts of the last few years, and you can find that link in the description below. And you would think, with the introduction of streaming services, that women would have a level playing field, but Spotify's five most streamed artists of 2018 were all men. Spotify's five most streamed tracks were also all male. And this happened in 2015 and 2016 as well. Guitarist and singer-songwriter Laura Marling said, If you prevent women from seeing any examples of them achieving, then it prevents them from believing they can achieve it. Before the age of 10, Brittany Howard lost her sister to cancer and then her family home to a fire. In this difficult time, she found solace in music, first with the drums, then the bass, and ultimately the guitar. She filled notebooks with stories, poems, and song lyrics while fantasizing about what it would be like to start a band of her very own. But as she got older, those dreams of being a performer were just that, dreams. Reality set in and she worked as a truck driver, worked at a frame store, and was eventually driving trucks for FedEx while attempting classes at a community college. She felt stuck. This wasn't what she imagined for herself. So she reinvigorated her musical spark and got a few friends together for weekend jam sessions. They graduated from playing empty clubs and later recorded demos when they weren't working their day jobs. It wasn't long before their music caught the attention of music blogs. And a year later, Alabama Shakes were nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Best New Artist. In similar fashion, the Mercury Prize is awarded to the UK's strongest album every year. But unlike the Grammys, the award tends to go to the underdog rather than the favorite. This year, Wolf Alice took the prize. Led by singer, lyricist, and guitarist Ellie Rosell, they've released two solid albums, mastering a sound that balances dream pop and grunge, and they still sound like they're only getting started. And I can't mention the Mercury Prize Award without speaking about PJ Harvey. Not only was Harvey the first solo female to win the award, she's the only artist to have ever won twice. Born in a small town in England, Polly's parents introduced her to Captain Beefheart and Bob Dylan at a young age. She grew enamored by blues music and took guitar lessons from folk singer-songwriter Steve Knightley. It wasn't long before she started her own band and started playing local pubs, but she'd put music on hold to attend art college in pursuit of a sculpting career. But music pulled her back in when she was recruited to join the alt-rock group Automatic Lemini. And then that group disbanded, and Harvey considered getting a sculpting degree. But again... Music pulled her back, and she started the project PJ Harvey in the early 90s. And thankfully she did. After 25 years and nine studio albums, PJ Harvey has inspired the likes of Kurt Cobain, collaborated with Tom York, and all the while continually reinventing herself and her sound. Something St. Vincent is no stranger to herself. She's been called the female Bowie. Her ambitiously stylized fourth album earned her a Grammy for Best Alternative Album, making her the first solo female performer in 20 years to take the award. 
Annie Clark has consistently received praise for her unique sound, and her electric guitar still sits at the core of it all. But she doesn't view the guitar as a six-string instrument, rather more like any other sound generator. She runs her guitars through tons of effects to make them sound anything like one. Annie Clark has been playing the guitar since the age of 12, but she wouldn't play or sing unless the rest of her family were making noise in the other room, a shyness that would quickly fade as she performed her first show at 15, playing a cover of Jimi Hendrix's The Wind Cries Mary. And when she wasn't playing in her high school jazz band or composing original music for the school play, she spent a part of her teenage years as a roadie for her aunt and uncle, a jazz duo who toured the world. She even managed one of their European tours, and the time spent with her uncle was a huge influence on her playing style. Annie went on to attend Berklee College of Music, the largest college for music in the world, but she dropped out in her third year. Berkeley was teaching her how to be a competent and employable musician, but Annie wanted to learn how she could better tap into her creativity. Music school revolved around grading and measurement, and she didn't believe music should be seen as something quantifiable. Soon, she was playing for the choral rock band The Polyphonic Spree before joining Sufjan Stevens' touring band. In her spare time, she began putting together her own debut under the pseudonym St. Vincent. Five solo LPs later, and Annie Clark continues to push her craft, delivering Album of the Year material with each new release. And you'll be sure to see Mitski's Be the Cowboy top many end-of-year lists. Mitski Miyawaki started her musical career while studying at Purchase College's Conservatory of Music, self-releasing her first two albums before she even graduated. But what has made her last few efforts resonate so much with listeners, aside from her lofty punk riffs, is just how open and vulnerable her songwriting can be. She's already being looked at as the voice of her generation. Iggy Pop called her the most advanced American songwriter. NPR said she sings about being a flawed person in a disappointing world. And I think that resonates pretty well in regards to the current gender imbalance in rock music and the music industry in general. But the fact is, rock has never been an exclusively male venture. Women have been influencing rock since its early beginnings. Sister Rosetta Tharp is widely considered the godmother of rock and roll, influencing legends like Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Elvis. Goldie and the Gingerbread started the first all-female rock band in the early 60s. Patti Smith released the first punk album in the mid-70s. Joan Jett was one of the first female recording artists to found her own label after being rejected by 23 of them. And Janis Joplin was and probably still is the reigning queen of rock and roll. This was all nearly 50 years ago when things like sexual aggression, exploitation, and unfair pay were most likely more prevalent. Not to mention the difficulties in winning over audiences and critics in what's still a predominantly male genre. Women have come pretty far. Yet there's still a macho baggage that sits on rock like a dead weight, and women are doing a great job at renouncing it. The number of artists doing anything remotely interesting with the rock genre are immensely female. Female rock artists aren't attached to any particular era or musical idea because there aren't many female rock icons of the past. Today's female artists are free to create something of their very own without concerning themselves with past comparisons. With every decade, more women took up the pen, the mic, the guitar, or drumsticks, contributing to rock's feminine perspective. So while it's true that there are plenty of excellent female rock artists out there today who are inspiring young women with a disposition for rocking out, there's never been a shortage of inspiration. Yes, women continue to define the emerging guitar market, and I can spotlight some exceptional women who have achieved in the genre attempting to inspire even one of you to pursue a career in music, and I can think women are rock's last hope, but the future of rock is a long way from being truly 50% female. Men aren't so confident in listening to female artists. I don't know if it has to do with our fragile sense of masculinity, but it's crippling us and it's crippling rock's existence. I challenge you. Listen to more female artists in 2019, recommend them to friends, call radio stations and request to hear more female artists. And if you're a young girl and you love music, don't give up on it because these women never did. If you have a passion for rock music, choose an instrument and get started. I'd recommend using Skillshare for those first steps. The online learning community has thousands of classes on things from guitar lessons, vocal training, digital production, whatever else might help you refine your skills and achieve that dream. For just 10 bucks a month, you'll get unlimited access to all courses. But thanks to Skillshare, the first 500 of my viewers to use the link in the description will get two months of Skillshare Premium free, which should give you enough time to get down those basics. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like rating, subscribe to learn more about the music you love, and don't forget to hit that bell so you never miss an episode. 
If you can support the channel, head over to our Patreon page for some rewards. Join the discussion over on Twitter and Instagram at The Middle Ocho. And that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching and keep listening to female artists.